got a package in the mail that I wasn't even expecting because I totally forgot about this. This package was sent last year and for some reason it got stuck in the mail for over six months. Let's take a look at what I got. In this video we're going to look at this little 50 watt per channel amplifier that came from IC Station. This one supports DC 5 to 27 volts, as you see right here. And there's no heat sink on this. So I would say if you're going to be getting, uh, uh, to, to get the maximum power, you probably would want to put a small heat sink on it. Oh, and it's included in the bag. Okay, well, that's why. So let's put the heat sink on. It's got a power cord so I can power this up directly from my power supply and we can run the snot out of this, as they say. Uh, the heat sink is attached with a piece of double sided tape. This has also got the heat uh, transfer compound built in so it's a it's double sided but it's also got the uh, thermal compound on it. If we take a look at the uh, before I put the heat sink on let's get a close up look at the board itself. So this one's got some nice heavy duty screws for the speakers. I actually like this better than some of the other ones that use those little plastic uh, uh, screw down terminals such as this one here. I find these ones here sometimes a little bit flimsy and, and uh, it's easy for the wire to pull out of. Something like this, you put the wire under these ones and you can also put a heavier gauge wire on these ones and uh, they're, they're not gonna go anywhere. Again, using large inductors this is a class D amplifier, obviously. We're going to power this up and we'll take a look at the signal coming off of the, the chip itself. I've got a preamp chip over here and um, Bluetooth. And you can feed this either through an aux cord or through the Bluetooth. The volume control has a power switch on it, which is nice. And it's a crank volume control as opposed to uh, some of the other ones that use just a volume up and down button. So that's a good thing too, especially if you're going to mount this into a cabinet and uh, into, a, into a box or a cabinet. Put your, have your auxiliary input on the front. It would have to be a plastic cabinet, though a plastic box. You wouldn't put this in a metal box because that would kind of defeat the purpose of the Bluetooth. But um, let's put the knob on here. And then we'll go ahead and we'll put the heat sink onto the chip itself. It's going to fit on like that. You'll probably put it either way for that matter. You can put it that way as well. I don't think it really matters what way the chip goes on, but I'm going to put it this way. So we're going to peel the back off the, the, off the uh, double sided adhesive heat sink compound and just place it down on top. Of it. Press it in place, and that'll hold it onto the chip. We'll get our power supply set up. We'll give this unit some power, and we'll uh, run some tests on it. So let me get my speakers connected and my power supply, and we'll, we'll try this both with Bluetooth and we'll, we'll power it up with external uh, music through the music player. So let me get the speakers connected, and then we'll uh, give this one a test run. You gotta love the supplied power connector. Yeah, I might want to use your own. The wires in this is pretty thin. Connect this up to my power supply and we'll start this at, uh, we'll start it down at, uh, what's to say the voltage rating on this thing is? 5 to 27 volts. Okay, we'll take it right down. We'll start it at 5 volts. Okay, 5.3 volts. We plug our music source in. I think it's a better power up the little player. Obviously, on five volts, you're not going to have much power.
frequency on this one's 395 kilohertz. And if we watch what happens on the scope on this, so I reset it here. If we look here, you'll see I'm running it at 5.6 volts. And if I increase the volume, once I get beyond the maximum uh, volume, it's gonna the voltage is gonna fall off, and we're gonna go into distortion. happens there the swing is too great to produce the actual voltage required to the speakers and so we get into distortion because the the uh, inductor and capacitors can only store so much energy which is converted back to an AC waveform from this so normally when these amplifiers are running there's there's not a lot of swing right but when you run out of juice see what happens so as I increase the voltage we'll take it up to 12 volts I'll play that track again just because it's uh, it's got a lot of dynamics in it jump in here the distortion you hear is the microphone on the camera distorting the music actually is not distorted at this level but it's overloading my camera you notice that it doesn't uh, doesn't distort and we also don't have as big a swing I'll, I'll start dialing the volt. I'm going to turn it up and I start dialing the voltage down so you can hear what happens. say that that sound is actually pretty good even though these crappy JVC speakers I've got on here I'm tempted to take I, the, 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 those the Panasonic speaker that that goes with that little mini system that I'm trying to that I fixed the other day that I'm trying to sell actually have superior sound to these we don't get any takers on that thing I'm gonna grab the speakers and put them in the shop here because they actually have very good sound but these ones aren't bad. They, 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 they won't certainly won't rattle any windows, but uh, they do have good sound. Okay, now we've heard this unit on the auxiliary input. Let's try it with Bluetooth. So this one here, I'm going to look this one up. It, this one's a ZK502. I wonder what shows up on this old phone. There we go. It's called BTWZ something. BTWZHI. That's the name that this thing uses. So if I go back to the music. It's 
Got some pretty good volume. Okay, I'm gonna take a walk and see how far this one goes. See if it goes further than the other one. The unit's placed, same place, right in the middle of my bench. So let me take a walk and see how far it works. So Bluetooth range wise, it's about the same as the last one. I made it to the front of my driveway, about 35 feet. So they're saying, I think they say this one's about 10, 10, 15 meters of range as well. I was looking at the specs on this thing. Yeah, 15 meters is what they're claiming on this one as well. So that's about right. Like the other one, it shuts down at just over 27 volts. I'm at 27.3. 28. 28.4, shut down. And it'll come back on when I get down to 27.9. At 28.5, it shuts off. Comes back on at 27.7. Went on to the low end and see where it shuts down. Came down at 4.4. There it shut down at just under 4 volts. 3.9. Obviously these Bluetooth boards, they're set up to run at 24 volts. They'll run at 12 volts, no problem, at about half the rated power. And they'll sound just fine. It's not going to affect the sound quality, it's just going to affect the maximum power. But most of these Bluetooth boards are designed to run on 24 volts. That seems to be where they're the happiest. Anyway, that's a look at this one, the ZK502C. Thanks for watching.